Have you ever felt hopeless? Have you ever felt like there's nothing more you can do? Have you ever felt like you have been used and abused? Are you a GoPro shareholder? <laughs> Howdy guys, I hope you're all doing phenomenal out there. So, GoPro, oh my gosh, the disaster, the drama continues. I thought maybe, maybe this could be the quarter that rebounds the stock. The company's already turned around. They took a turn several quarters ago when they started posting great growth again, double digit growth. I thought maybe this could be the quarter that really rebounds the stock and revitalizes the stock price. And nope, it sure as heck wasn't, guys. So we gotta look at all these numbers. We gotta, I gotta tell you about my feelings on this. I gotta share, you know, how much money I've lost with this whole deal and all that kind of stuff, guys. We'll kind of get into all that. Uh, first off, some positive, upbeat stuff here. So four stocks I'm buying November edition yesterday. So in the first 24 hours, this was, it actually came out at 12.30 p.m. yesterday, right? This was at 11.50 a.m. I took this screenshot. So it's still at about 40 minutes before it hit 24 hours. It's at 9,300 views. We've never had a channel, or excuse me, a video get uh, over 9,000 views within the first 24 hours. That's like amazing. It seems like just yesterday I was excited if a video got, I don't know, 50 or 60 views in the first 24 hours. Over 9,000 views in the first 24 hours, guys. That's freaking ridiculous. All right, so if we look at GoPro here, oh boy, down. Uh, I took the screenshot. It was still about an hour until the market closed, and it was down 12%, $1.33, back into the $9 range again. Oh, yeah, yeah. So let's look at this here. So revenue up 37% year over year. Unreal, guys. That killed analyst estimates. That even killed what I was expecting the company to do. That was unbelievable. 40% gross margin, which is, is amazing. Gap and non-gap profitable in Q3. That's big. Fusion spherical, uh, spherical camera is shipping in November. That's great news there. If we look down here, uh, the EPS, or uh, first let's look at the revenue. Obviously revenue came in 37% growth there, that's that's amazing. And then we look at the gap um, dilute net income, 10 cents, and analysts were expecting around two cents. On a non-gap basis, they did around 15 cents, guys. So un unreal numbers as far as the past quarter went. They blew analyst estimates away. They blew even my estimates away. They did way better than anybody expected. And uh, so that was great news as far as last quarter. Where the trouble came in here was a fourth quarter revenue. They got it for 470 million plus or minus 10 million there. And basically, analysts had had somewhere around, I believe it was uh, 510 or 520 million. So that came underneath analyst estimates here. All right, so we gotta dissect all this, okay? So first off, when I listen to the conference call, the the, the the whole focus of the company is really what I love as far as where it's going. They're, they're talking about you know rebuilding the balance sheet, so be a super strong balance sheet company, uh, being gap profitable uh, you know, in a major way, being a very profitable company, and having double digit growth. That's like three of the biggest things I look for in a company. Super strong balance sheet, um, you know, profitable and, and getting more profitable and having profitable growth, not just growth for growth you know, sake. There's a lot of companies that just grow and they don't really make any money on the bottom line. They want to grow the top and the bottom line, have double digit growth. Um, so that's all phenomenal. Uh, you know, that's phenomenal news. And the quarter was amazing, but yet the stock falters here. The stock falters because the revenue guide came in weak. And um, I don't know, it just seems like any time Wall Street wants to take this one uh, negative, they can. There's always, I feel like there's always something they can point at. If it's not this, oh, it's gross margin. Oh, if it's not this, maybe it's unit sale. Oh, if it's not this, it's ASPs. There's always something they can poke their finger at. So you could come in and blow analyst estimates away in the past quarter, but the guidance was a little weak, and all of a sudden they're like, oh, that guidance is weak right there, so nope, your stock's going down. You know, this is bad, this is bad news here. Or or let's say, um, let's say the, the reverse situation. Let's say they missed numbers in this past quarter, but their guidance was awesome. It was it blew away analyst estimates. What would analysts be saying, or what would people be saying out there? What would Wall Street be saying? Oh, they missed last quarter. Their stock deserves to go down. You got to understand with GoPro, this is a stock that's what a couple dollars away from its 52-week low. This is not a stock that's priced to perfection at all. This is not a stock that's priced to perfection. This is not an Nvidia. This is not a Shopify. This is not one of those stocks that you know is up hundreds of percent in the past year or two that they have to kind of get every metric perfect. Otherwise, all of a sudden, it's like, you know, the stock could falter. This is a stock that's near its 52-week low. So any upside they have should shoot the stock up. And what do we have? We have back to a $9 stock again, which is where it was like uh, two, three weeks ago, right? So frustrating whole deal. The main thing I'm frustrated at, I mean, one is I hate being down in a position that I've been in for over a year and a half. 
But the other thing is I bought a lot of, of 2018 uh, options about a year and a half ago, about a year and a half ago, I bought a lot of options, call options that expire in January 2018, okay? I bought some at $5 strike price, some at $8 strike price, those should do, those should do, should do just fine. I bought some at $10 strike price, who knows what's gonna happen with those when they expire, will they make any money for me? Will I break even on those? We don't know. The 13s and the 15s are almost for sure not gonna make money. On the $13 strike prices, my break even is like $14.50. Unless GoPro has a miraculous next three months, I doubt it's gonna hit that. So those are probably gonna expire worthless. And then the uh, 15s are, I think my cost basis is around $16 on those options. So, it, you know, the 13s and the 15s are basically gonna expire worthless. I bought $3,000 of each of those call options. So I bought $3,000 worth of the fives, $3,000 worth of the uh, eights, $3,000 worth of the 10s, 3,000 worth of the 13s, 3,000 worth of the uh, 15s, okay? So basically, I'm gonna lose at least $6,000. Now, the, the fives and the eights, I can probably still do well on those, but the, the 13s and the 15s, those are basically a loss, right? So that's $6,000 lost there. The 10s, we don't know about, that's kind of up in the air, and I thought the 13s would be, you know, an easy for sure type thing. The 15s, I always thought, oh, you know, it's a little more of a risk, but you know, if, they, if the stock really explodes, I can make a lot of money there. Um, but yeah, so that's what's frustrating me with the whole deals. I got so many option contracts that are expiring January 2018, you know, and for the stock to still be down here, it's just, it's amazing to me. With the growth GoPro has, with the focus on profitable growth, um, you know, it's frustrating. It's very frustrating, um, you know, but anyways, as far as like a long-term shareholder, and if we just, you know, kind of exit off the, the call options that I have, right? As far as a long-term shareholder, I'm happy with where the underlying company is going. Going. Am I happy with the stock price? Absolutely not. But am I happy with where the underlying company is going uh, to building up that balance sheet to uh, profitable growth, to growth at double digit rate? Th that's what I look for in a company. That's what I love, guys. Those are some of the things I love in a company. So for that reason, I'm still very bullish on my position long term. I'm just, you know, very frustrated shareholder as far as where the stock's performed in the short term here. And those call options, I'm going to have, you know, lose $6,000 plus dollars probably with those call options expiring. So that's, that's a frustrating deal there. And one other thing I want to point out here while we're on this whole option subject, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about changing up a little thing I do in 2018. So here's what, you know, I, I build a big position. Let's say I have, you know, there's usually two or three companies I call really big positions of mine, right? They're all five figure plus positions. And sometimes there are smaller positions I have that are like four figures, right? So what I'm thinking about doing with the five-figure positions is when a company is gonna report earnings that week, I'm thinking about starting to buy short-term put options that expire that week just so I can hedge my positions a bit because that's something I don't do a lot. And in a situation like GoPro here, I could have made a lot of money on those, those short-term put options, which would have been nice, and, and saved some face there and then went and put that money back into long shares or something like that. So in these type of situations, and so some of you guys out there, if you would have done that, if you would have hedged your positions, Positions with some put options short term that expired that week. You know, I'm talking to you AMD shareholders, I'm talking to you Under Armour shareholders. You guys would have made probably more money on the put options that, that uh, would have made you so much money that were out of the money, right? than what you would have lost with your long shares there. So, you know, that's a move I'm thinking about making in 2018 with my bigger positions, buying, always buying some short-term put options the week they, they have earnings come out. That way, just in case things don't go as, as, as planned, hey, I get to make some money on the flip side, guys. So um, then there's a lot of stocks that you could have done very well, very well with put options on those guys. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this today. Um, I'm getting a little better. I'm not quite all better. Yesterday, I spent the whole day in bed not not feeling good and I should have known GoPro stock was going to go down when I was sick. So anyways, thank you for watching guys and have a great day.